Hey everyone, how's it going? Thank you for joining us on Orbit. It's been a few weeks uh, since we've been here, but we appreciate you being here uh, with us. Uh, how's it going? How's it going, Trevor? Hey, uh, it's going well for me. Um, yeah, happy to be back on and and uh, talking to all you fine folks and, and hanging out with you, Kurt, for the morning. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. It has been a while. Uh, Let's see, who is that? Govin Doc. Did I get that right? Govin Doc? Thank you for the heart. And I'm going to heart you back. Look at that. <laughs> Shaboop. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good to be back. What do you, what do you, it's been a couple of weeks, but like, let's just, you know, how was your weekend, Trevor? Weekend was good. Um, went skateboarding yesterday with a, with a couple buddies and, um, and, that was nice. Um, I'm, I've been working on, um, well, I guess before, in, in the month of, what was before June? May? In the month of May, yeah. uh, <laughs> I was working on a, uh, on like a SMS based wait list for my friend's barbershop. That's right. And, um, and it was using like socket.io and react and all those fun things. Um, and so we released it it's in production being used all that stuff uh and right now what we're doing is we're we're trying to make it more generally usable like they've been they've been getting asked like what are you using for your wait list yeah and can we use it too kind of thing oh, and wow. so you um started so a business <laughs> kind of, uh, a little bit uh ho hopefully hopefully uh hopefully it's it's enough to call a side hustle but We'll see. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens when we get there. But yeah, um, it's relevant because in this month, like basically starting June, at the beginning of June, I started refactoring it into a uh, like a web app that uses GraphQL, and I'm using GraphQL subscriptions for the first Ooh, time. Nice. And in in place of you know Socket.io. Yeah. Um, and, and the, the main reason is because, you know, the, the feature set was really, really small when it's, when you're talking about just one business and, and everything, all the, all of these like variable, variable values that would vary from business to business are hard coded. Uh, we needed, a, we ha a need developed for us to be able to make like crud operations like creating an organization adding users uh changing the messages that gets the automated messages that get sent and stuff yeah. like that so uh so the, my favorite way to do that is using graphql mutations um, absolutely so i figured well if we're gonna go down that path then we might as well refactor this the the real-time stuff to subscriptions and it's been amazing i gotta say uh, really, really fun, like intro to subscriptions. And, and it was, um, it was pretty easy to get once, you, once I got over that initial little, um, like bootstrapping learning curve, yep. uh, yep. it was really, really nice. Yeah. It's really cool. It gets, yeah, it gets tricky when you start to wanting to do things like only, um, uh, actually send the subscription if like a certain condition is met, right? Like, um, you know, a certain channel matches or something like that or, um, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, otherwise from a very bare bones, like if you're just sending them, uh, all of them, that that's actually how these layouts work now. Mm -hmm. Um, so the chat that everyone, uh, who's joining us sees on the screen and when a follow pops up, that's all through subscriptions. Um, cause this is, uh, our layout for Twitch's react app. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's awesome. I love them. I think they're super useful. They can get very difficult to, once you hit a certain level of scale. Um, uh, but any real time data, um, becomes troublesome at scale. It's not specific to, um, subscriptions. It's, it's general to web sockets. Um, mm load balancing and scaling out real time connections is quite difficult. It's a problem to solve. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's sort of good to keep in mind then. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's solvable. 
Uh, and like any problem, if you're at that level of scale, kudos to you. Cause like, isn't that what we want? Like that's, that's what sure. you want is like to have to scale enough that you need to worry about how, how your subscriptions are scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Well, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I can't wait to follow along with that. Um, you should drop your Twitch handle in the chat for anyone who is not familiar and they can follow you for if they're sure. interested in, in learning how to do that. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. I've been in that kind of, uh, um, yeah, I, ha I haven't been streaming this, this thing much. Like we, I, I, me and my buddy Ken actually streamed the, uh, the, the waitlist app, the original right. waitlist app in its entirety. Um, yeah. so and all, all those VODs are also up on YouTube. Um, nice. it's the same handle youtube.com slash my name. Um, and, and so you can, you can, watch all that but but yeah i haven't i haven't really been streaming uh basically at all this month um, sure. I, I, <laughs> none of us really have right even yeah. the apollo channel has not and um yeah that goes without saying it's just it was time to be quiet um mm -hmm. and let other people have a voice so yeah it's good to not be streaming um so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. cool yeah um yeah that's why it's been weeks for us as well um yeah it was just you know not not an appropriate time to tech stuff just really didn't seem to matter very much right right yeah yeah all right so let's see okay um what do we got going on well we don't have a ton of stuff we've got three things they're all pretty awesome and interesting um but yeah it's not not a ton of stuff and also i would imagine that that also has to do um with uh, the last few weeks uh okay so without that let's get started let's dive in so the first thing I got in like um, big, big surprise here, a uh, little internal shout out to GraphQL Summit worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. Uh, I still think there needs to be something Pitbull related. No one's ever going to be able to change my mind about that. <laughs> and like, I really want to figure out how we can do that. But yes, GraphQL Summit uh, used to take place in San Francisco. Now it is virtual. It is global. I love it. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty much worldwide. I mean, there are still things called time zones, but yeah, uh, but it will be available free for everyone. Um, and even if you can't catch it while it's happening in real time, everything will be available immediately afterwards. Um, yes, yeah, so it's going to be streamed. It's it's actually broken up over four days so as to not keep you stuck in front of a screen all day um, for a single day which can be rough. Um, but yeah, July 30th and 31st, uh, which is Thursday and Friday, and then August 6th and 7th, which is also a Thursday and Friday. Uh, and so it's for the, I want to say, oh, does it have the times here? Because I want to say it's like morning time Pacific is like when, when the things will actually be happening. I was actually, I actually came across, okay, yeah, so it's, it's, it'll be, uh, at least the times that are booked on my calendar are 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. to like 11 or 12 um, Pacific Pacific time. Yeah. Okay. So, so that makes sense. 11 11 a.m. Um, Eastern. Yeah. Yep. Which gets us about as far around the world as we can get without getting too late into the evening. Sorry, Australia. Um, probably sorry, Japan. Um, Hawaii also. Mm, it would be really early Hawaii. really early hawaii right yeah. like 4 a.m or something i think it would be like hours, yeah, yeah. like five or six a.m i i wish yeah. i knew my, wish i knew my time zones as well as i know like yeah like just off the top of your head right things, yeah. yeah 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 um but either way it's about as far through europe and uh over into like asia as we can get yeah uh, but yeah, so yeah, I can't wait. It'll be very exciting. Uh, lots of good content coming. Q&A sessions after the talks. I believe there's also going to be some like interactive uh, breakout rooms, both some tech related, some not tech related. Uh, yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. A good learning experience. <laughs> Three to four hours. There we go. Interactive talks in panels. I forgot about the panels. I'm always forgetting about the panels. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's also be streamed here on Twitch. Um, so you'd be able to come and hang out in the chat and interact. That'll be really cool. 
And uh, yeah, that's it. That's number one on the list. That's what I've got so cool. far. Yeah, right. That's good. Yeah, it's gonna be a, gonna be a fun time. And and like emphasis for me is on the the community aspect. Like, yes, it's gonna be a lot of great content, and you'll be able to just like kind of kick back and and um and watch this stuff. But there are yeah. also opportunities for for you to to interact with yeah. other folks in the community, whether it's through Twitch chat or through some of these breakout rooms. They offer us. Uh, an opportunity yeah. to like talk to one another and um, kick around ideas, talk about yeah. what we ate for breakfast that morning, and, and oh yeah, it, it'll just right. be a it'll be a nice time. Not I I don't I don't think it's like a one for one replacement for the for the the conference experience. Which yeah. if you've been been it's to a graphical different. summit before, um, it's a really really nice nice time to get to to interact with the community. However, the problem with graphical summit is that. It, because it happens in one place in San Francisco, it can be hard for people who who live far away to come and hang out as well, and um, and so you see less like international representation there. Um, this, yeah. on the other hand, and and we notice this with with the um, with Apollo Space Camp is that it attracted yeah. a much more global. Um, uh, group of people Audience. together and that, and that was really really fun like getting to getting to see how how people in thailand are using graphql yeah. and and like getting getting stories from around the world and um i just thought that was that was cool so i'm looking forward to seeing the community out there in uh at, at graphql summit and it's free i don't know if, if uh if that was mentioned but uh, yeah i said it was free but yeah it's okay, free okay, yeah. I okay. did forget to mention, though, that I think if you want to do like the breakout room stuff that you need to register. So it is free and you'll be able to just watch the talks. But if you don't register, I'm pretty sure then you won't be able to do the interact, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's how that works, because it will be okay. like whoever registers gets sent like the invites, I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it, I can not to register anyway. I dropped the link in the chat. Yeah. Uh, you can go there, go there right now, and, and leave us on in the background. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's free. What do you I have promise, to lose? I promise we make great background noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, cool. Speaking of conferences, oops, I'm going on the wrong way on my uh, my computer. Uh, yeah, speaking of conferences, right now happening this very minute. Um, HashuraCon 20 is live. So, uh, after you jump out of here, you might want to jump into there and see what they got going on. A lot of GraphQL related content, not solely GraphQL. Is Hash Hashura only GraphQL? Um, I'm sorry. I am totally uh, confusing them with Prism. And yes, they are only GraphQL. And yeah. I digress. Yes, they are. Yes. Um, Regardless, let me drop the link to the tweet. Boom. And you can get there from there. Sorry, did you have something you wanted to add there, Trevor? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Oh, while we're doing this, I totally forgot to mention um, that if anybody has something that they want to share or that they found interesting about GraphQL or like anything in the ecosystem, really, uh, drop a link and we'll check it out. We'll check it out right here. Um, let's see what else. What else is going on? What's the um? What is the the? What's on the agenda for for Hashuracon? Um, That's a good and, question. And what is like the? What is the format? Do you know Ooh, any of this? Ooh, this is nice. You can check it out. Oh, let's let's see. Oh, so today? Wait, what's today? Today's the twenty second, right? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so we want the twenty second. Here we go. Um. So we got, Oops, it, looks, it looks like single track, digging that. Yeah, and we got some talks. Let's see what we got. Let me blow this up a little bit Okay. for the folks at home. There we go. All right, so we got invisible GraphQL. That's happening right now, right? This is what I'm forcing you all to miss. Um, <laughs> so, ha, sorry about that. <laughs> or you can just leave. Goodbye. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got that. Then we've got... Uh, architecture and authorization modeling for a complex multi-tenant SaaS platform with Hazura. Okay. 
That sounds pretty deep and specific. I like it. But it's yeah. like a problem a lot of people will probably face, you know? Uh, accessing, I don't know, Sherry, Sherry, Shares, Real what Estate is, Knowledge is Graph. Uh, multi-tenant means you uh, support multiple customers within the same database. So this is something WordPress and Drupal are both uh, able to do as well. It like silos the data as far as like they can only ever access their own, but the data for all of whatever the entities are um, have the same uh, database. Gotcha. They're all stored in the same database. Uh, okay. Major League Soccer did this with Drupal. Um, they had the league site and then also all of the club sites were, uh, a multi-tenanted Drupal instance, so like 25 different, um, websites all using the same Drupal or not Drupal, but like database empowered by nice. Drupal multi-tenant. Yeah. So it, it definitely has a lot of uses, uh, a lot, especially with like, like, like you said, SaaS programs where like you have a lot of companies signing up to use a particular service or people. Uh, nice. Yeah. And it all stays in the same database as opposed to each one having their own. Okay. So accessing, uh, yeah, real estate knowledge, Sherry's real estate knowledge. I'm just curious, like, what is that? Does anybody know? I think Shara is like Shara. A, a, so real it's a estate company. company. Yeah. I just want to know how to pronounce it. Shara, right? I don't know. I, I, I would... That, that's that's how I that's how I see it. Oh, maybe it's cherry because their logo is a cherry. Oh, their logo is a cherry, so it probably is cherry. Cherry, <laughs> got it. Okay, but instead of a Y, it has an E, so cherry. I thought it was like French or something. Hey yo, welcome to the chat. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Sm sm oh, I can't. I don't even know what that is. Small brute, small throat. <laughs> I think I think small that's I think that's a, that, that's that's what I would guess. Yeah, small, small brute. Yes, that's what I'm gonna guess. Pretty good. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, so cherry. I guess it's cherry. Um, there we go. So we've got that, and then we've got what else? Oops, it like took me to the bottom. Oh, I'm back on workshops. Mm. Okay. Okay, so accessing Cherry's real estate knowledge graph with a single GraphQL API. I like that. That's cool. I'm also interested to see if this is like an open knowledge graph that you can use because that would be fun for demos and such. It would. Um, so I will leave that tab there open and investigate after. Okay, or maybe I'll do it on and then everyone will know. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, building multi-tenant geospatial data platform. Multi-tenant, hot topic. Who's doing that? Uh, this is Ryan Airbus. Rodriguez. Okay, cool. Yeah. LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I do not have a LinkedIn anymore. No? No. I also Dish realize that that's like a very privileged thing to not be to be able to not have to have a LinkedIn. Mm. I deleted mine. I couldn't take it. It was just like thousands upon thousands of like connections and messages from recruiters. Mm -hmm. A lot of it feels kind of like automated as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just did not like it. But anyway, I digress. All right. Um, Making breaking API changes without breaking your consumer app. What's the fun in that? Yeah. <laughs> are they are they even breaking changes if they don't destroy your consumer app? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Yes, no, I mean, just, uh, <laughs> it, it is like a breaking change, but I guess you protect against it. Maybe if we, you know, we. I remember we um we talked about this this topic uh on an orbit episode probably like a couple months ago you know like versioning fields ah in, yeah uh, graphql and this, this this i would imagine it kind of covers 
the, the similar similar ground yeah. uh, to this topic. Um, yeah, and it's interesting. But, They're resorting to uh, Postgres to make it happen is what it's saying down here. That's cool. Yeah, it was some non-traditional use of Postgres magic. All right. Yeah. Uh, small brew. It was a tongue twister, but I'm glad I got I got it out. I'm glad I gave it the old, uh, what is it called? The old college try. Is that the expression? Mm -hmm. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, adding GraphQL using Hasura to an existing fintech app to speed up development. That sounds pretty cool too. Fintech always like intrigues me because they have a lot of interesting problems. But it also sounds like work that I wouldn't enjoy. Mm -hmm. Just like no, I'm not a big like large data set numbers um, type person. I did that once and I found that I don't really like it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if uh, if I am or I'm or I'm not that yet. I don't, I don't know yeah. if, I've, if I've had really had the opportunity. Yeah, I worked for uh, Integral Ad Science. It was a good job. Don't get me wrong. It was a great team. Um, one of the best managers I've ever had um, as well. Shout out to you, Michael, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was good. But I just realized that like, so it was uh, ad analytics, real-time bidding, like all this stuff. So reporting portals, lots of reports, lots of data visualizations, lots of graphs, lots of configurations and filtering options and things. And it was like, a, it was a lot. It was a very complex UI, um, but it's just very like numbers and visualizations was like the whole UI. And that just kind of, yeah. I have a question. As somebody who is new to GraphQL, how is Apollo GraphQL different from Facebook's Relay? All right. That's a good question. Hitting us with the hard questions on a Monday. Um, that's not that hard. So um, I'll do, I'll give it my best shot and then you can follow up with your like fixes. Oh, we got to follow. Oh, hey, it's you. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. Um, yeah. Facebook's relay follows um, a more common, they enforce like a, an API structure that matches uh, what you see across like graph databases and other graph systems. And what I mean by that is they uh, follow the idea of like edges and nodes. Uh, and so when you have a graph, you have this idea that you have um, a node, which is the entity or bit of data and then it connects to another node via an edge right and so like it's kind of how it draws correlations and how a graph works and it can jump all over the place so facebook has adopted that structure um and when you um uh, query for your data you're using this and it knows that you're going to use that and so it does things under the hood um that make it um like a bit abstracted for you i guess and like it, i don't know um uh it's just different whereas like apollo is looser as in it just gives you a graphql but it makes no assumptions about how you want to like structure or return that data um and allows you to build out your servers uh in any way that you want so you could still do edges and nodes if you want to follow that um uh, graph i don't want to say like best practice but common practice i guess you could say um, and, uh, as well, Apollo client differs from relay client. And as far as implementation for some of the things that they are doing, and they also have, uh, some different features. Um, they're just like, it would be kind of like asking like what's difference between view and react. Like they do have a lot of differences, but at the end of the day, they're letting you do the same thing, which is use GraphQL within your app. Um, but some people prefer the relay style and some people prefer the Apollo style. Yeah. So it's just about like the different features that they have, um, and what you want to use. I've found relay to be more complicated to get started with, but actually when working with really large GraphQL APIs, then it's very nice, uh, especially with very large apps. It has a lot of cool features 
that it will do for you automatically to make life easier, like taking all of your fragments and building out a query for you um, to send over. But like uh, Apollo has um, similar types of things by doing batch queries. Um, also, you could do, oh, is there an Apollo plugin coming out to make it very easy to integrate with Prisma? Oh, well, first, I guess that's my wrap up on Relay versus Apollo. Trevor, do you have anything you want to add or correct me on there? Oh. Are you there? Did I lose you? Uh oh, Trevor, can you not hear me? Uh oh, I think we're frozen. We're frozen on the stream? Oh. We back? I mean, I think I'm here. The stream seems okay. I think you might only be frozen. Hey. Hello. This is hilarious. Uh, hey, hello. Oh. You can't hear me, but I can All hear right. you. I can hear you now. Oh, that was wild. Yeah. I, I think our stream was okay the whole time, though. Oh, really? I, I believe so. I mean... Maybe it was, yeah. maybe it was just my internet. Yeah, that yeah. I think you just had like a little internet glitch. I mean... The metrics here could be wrong, oh. but it says like there was no issues with the stream. So I wouldn't know unless somebody. Oh, great. I, I, I sorry. I, I just assumed that, uh, that we lost you, but, um, might've been, might've been the other way around. Um, yeah. Okay. So then I was just wrapping up and saying that was the end of my spiel on Apollo versus relay. Did you have anything you wanted to add or correct about that? Yeah, um, oh, uh, smaller brute, small brute, uh, said that their they thought their connection died as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, maybe we did, maybe we did, um, have a hiccup, but it was weird because it, anyway, it was working for um, me, yeah, yeah, like my the, the only thing I'll add is, is Relay is a GraphQL client for React. Um, but Apollo GraphQL um, actually represents a suite of tools, including, you know, Apollo Client, which is a, uh, oops, which is a JavaScript GraphQL client um, that has bindings for React, but you can also use it without React. Uh, and as well, we we create Apollo Server, which allows you to really easily spin up a GraphQL server, and that's something that Relay doesn't include. Um, so that that's that's the other the other piece that I would I'd, I'd mention is is yeah, if you use Apollo, you can kind of build the entire cover cover the entire surface area of a GraphQL yeah. powered web app, and Relay represents only the client side. That's a good point. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. But like, yeah, if that only works with React. So if you're doing other things, then you need a different solution. Yeah. Or, or yikes. Yeah, the, the, there's, there's ways, there's ways that you can use Relay with other, with other frameworks, but it's not, yeah. it, it's primarily built for use with, uh, with React. So, and then a follow-up, is there an Apollo plugin coming out to make it very easy to integrate with Prisma? I don't even know. I don't know what that means. A Prism plugin? Or like, like does Prism support plugins? Uh, Prisma, like the... A Prisma, I like meant, but yeah, Prisma. Software as a service thing. Um, plugin. I don't know, I don't know, yeah, I don't know what that integration would look like. Um, yeah, like if you're... Ah! I think I think like Prisma has its own tools, right? Like yeah, I thought that was the I don't know. I I don't know if they if you necessarily use Apollo with Prisma. Yeah. But yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know enough about it, but I think that you are correct in there that the goal for Prisma is to uh, I'm just gonna be quiet because I actually don't know. 
generate Prisma client. So you use your own Prisma client. Hmm. Okay. There was there was a period of time when Prisma was like um, primarily like GraphQL server as a service kind of thing. Yeah. But I don't know if that's really the the case anymore. They no. at this point they offer all of the all of the necessary pieces for you to it's about data uh, use their service and management. That's what I'm getting from this. It's a database toolkit yeah. now, which is actually very intriguing. And yeah. now I really want to go back to trying this out because like I would rather this looks really interesting. Uh getting autocomplete. So like this would be like replace like sequelize uh yeah but, but i mean like and and it would mean like th this is kind of like um kind of like fauna db um it's meant to be where, done from the client like, you you can do it i i as i understand you can do it from the client or the server but you you all your data is stored with prisma oh as well. like they 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 host all of your, oh, uh, your data. you can't connect it to an existing database. Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, that, 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 that's that's how I understand it anyway. Oh, okay. you can see. I I I I'm definitely not. I should not be authorized to to speak on this subject because I've never used Prisma yeah. before. Yeah, and this is what I thought. Um, yeah. So now it's like an ORM, which makes me now say oh this is interesting <laughs> yeah here we go provider postgres url here's your database url and okay. boom you're off and running interesting. yeah see here's the postgres url it has even a command line called introspect which looks through your database and creates schemas for everything and generates typed client for it. okay right but this is the thing so here's, here's my opinion. I think that I might like to use Prisma to access data in my database. It seems like it would be good to use as an ORM, but I don't think I would want it to generate any GraphQL queries for me because nine times out of 10, the way that the data is stored in the database is not how the client is going to use it. Uh, and really the whole point of GraphQL is to build a schema that matches the needs of your client, not the structure of your database. Um, and so I would use it as an ORM inside my own um, Apollo server behind my own custom schema. I might use it for the data access stuff. I actually want to experiment with it just to see how it is versus something like SQLize. Um, but I don't think I would use it as the forward facing um, GraphQL clients and maybe that's not always true and maybe there's like cases where that would be perfectly fine like actually the job listings app that we're building I don't really see why it would matter too much to have like some separate um, uh, schema but in most cases the schema is not going to match the database mm -hmm. that's my I... my opinion this is just my opinion yeah yeah, it does look amazing. I do want to check it out. What do you think, Trevor? Yeah, um, I haven't had a more? chance to try it yet. Um, you want to do a mission to. briefing with me? Do I? Yeah. And uh, on on Prisma? Yeah, we'll build. We'll we'll try it out. We'll use it as an ORM. See how it goes. Sure, I'm I'm up for anything, dude. You know me. <laughs> Awesome, cool. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, Pierre Nohel says that um, he would say it's the opposite, or they, sorry, no assumptions there. Apologies. Uh, they say that 99% um, of the time, they have the opposite opinion, and 99% of the time, the data on the client is what they have in the DB. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, small brute, no idea. We'll, but it will get it on the calendar. Um, uh, 
Oh wait, that's the wrong URL. Apollo.dev events calendar. I know that's not there yet, but that's coming soon because I redid um, our chat bot. And so I don't have any uh, commands set up with it, but com uh, calendar will be there. I actually need to do that this week. Are we I'm using gonna... Nightbot or something like that? We are not because I've set up the um, the system uh, uh, like our custom. I have like our own personal bot now that's connected to the subscriptions. Yeah. But because we have that bot, I can like send chat messages. I can do whatever. So like if I see something like, you know, bang calendar, I can convert that into having a polygraph QL respond with the URL. Oh, very cool. Kind of like what just happened. Exactly. Yeah. Except I was actually typing <laughs> it out yeah. as, as they were typing it out. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, if you are curious for anyone who's curious, um, the scenes for this stream are here in this repository. I still have to go through. I have a bunch more. Um, code bases to rename my default branch but i am not using main or trunk and i am instead using no regrets that's your 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 the default branch is called no regrets no no regrets spelled nice. incorrectly <laughs> 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 yes that's that's gonna be Oh yeah, some warnings. Yeah, come on, let's depend a bot. Yeah, like I'll get to those. It'll be like, oh, dire emergency. You must check this out, and then it'll be like some thing that's like really not an emergency. Upgrade Acorn from zero point two right. to one five to zero point two one six. Yeah, and then it'll be like the warning was, and it'll just be like some thing that's like. I don't know. Maybe it is more yeah. important than I give it credit for. Significant DDoS vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who's DDoS and Eggcorn? <laughs> All right. Um, so next. Um, oh, this is a good one. Thank you for adding this one. Uh, we'll do that one next. Okay. Uh, okay, here. Let's go here. JSComplete.com. So this was interesting. Um, something that I found. Well, do you remember when the is promise package got changed? No, but that's different. That's not normally what those dependency warnings are. They mean there's some kind of it, like they don't know that that would break my app if the code changes. They're looking for like security vulnerabilities, like certain times that there are um, security concerns with certain packages. And that's more of what those warnings are. Um, yeah, so Delhi Sun, um, I just followed them. Not really that familiar with them, but this is really cool. Well, he discovered it. Oh, bye. Uh, uh, Sam Arbuna. Who is this? Nice. Yeah, Jay is complete. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah. And let's see. So let's go back. Oh, oh, oh. Take a look. It's really cool. It's just a bunch of resources. Um, and yeah, it has like featured books, featured courses. And if you go take a look at these. Look at this. It's like free. And uh, it's got a lot of cool stuff. Very neat. Oh, very, very cool. Yeah, I like this a lot. You could change the theme. Let's see what it looks like. Whoa, Ooh. so are all of these books and things um, Free. like trans transcribed from like real books or are they all written by this person or group of people uh good question zero idea um, not, not not i don't mean to use the word real books to mean well, that, like, yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah but i don't know if this is all the same person or if these are free or they don't 
it's not really clear to me. They don't they don't indicate the writer of the content. That's actually true. That's actually got me a little like, oh, now I'm freaking out. I don't want to promote this if it's. I think this is all their stuff. I gotta assume, right? Ah, <sighs> you know what they say about assumptions. <laughs> Everybody's got one? No, that's opinions. Well, everyone does have opinions. Um, oh, I was thinking of intentions either way. Not assumptions. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, but yeah. So, I mean, the labs are also within embedded within JS Complete. Oh, I was going to say, like, about giving benefit of the doubt. Like, sometimes, you know, like, instead of giving benefit of the doubt, you got to, <laughs> like, just do the research and find out. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but yeah, it appears to be all contents um, from them. If it's not, let me know. Um, and it is free, but you can also donate. I'm going to copy this link. Shaboop. If you want to help fight injustice. Boom. Racial injustice, to be clear. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. Um, what was next? Oh yeah. Uh, so this looks cool. A lot of good resources. Uh, I'm going to add it to my list, go through and find out for sure. Um, person in the bottom, right? I think I saw you on YouTube looking at some Paul GraphQL event live talks. Was it you? Weird question. I know. Uh, is that me? I, I mean, you are in the bottom, right? <laughs> Uh, did, do you see me on YouTube looking, looking at some, as in, I was looking at some Apollo GraphQL event live talks. Um, I've, I've actually never spoken at an Apollo GraphQL event. Um, might been, might've been somebody that looked like me. Well, uh, there was when we did space camp, but that was me. No, like you were in them. Huh. Um, maybe oh. I, I, I did a, I, I talked to React Adelphia, um, earlier, earlier this year, um, could have been that, or I or could maybe have been an, in an older episode of orbit or something else where we were looking at, could have been that too. Something. Yeah. Like we, Kurt and I do, do this stream, um, you know, Prior to a month ago, we've been we, we were doing the stream every week. Uh, we also have another stream that we do on Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, so it could have been that, or um, or yeah, it could have just been somebody that looked like me. <laughs> those those are basically the you look the options like. that I can think of. But yeah, yeah. If you follow him on Instagram, you can see him doing some awesome skating stuff. <laughs> that too. Just gonna, just gonna drop that in there. Makes me want to skate sometimes, and then I remember how bad my joints are, and I'm like, eh. Oh, dude, it hurts. I'm 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 sore today. It's uh, yeah, it's rough. Yeah. You're getting really good though, man. Oh, well, you are good. You're not getting good, but like I watch, and I'm like, wow, he's doing some really technical tricks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm 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 also getting good. Uh, oh, also, something else that Trevor did um, was build a, well, I guess like a quarter pipe? No, it's a, no, it's it's a, a half, half pipe. pipe, technically, but like it's just not a very uh, high half pipe. What's the height at the... Um, three feet. Yeah, three feet. Yeah, there you go. So, After, yeah, it's called a... Uh, coping, it's called a that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. It's called a what? I'm sorry. It's called a mini ramp. Yeah, right. Mini ramp. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I built I built a, a mini ramp um, last weekend, not not the one that we just had, but the one prior to that. Um, built that with my friends, and and we uh, we actually we we streamed the whole build process on Twitch, and that was really fun. Had yeah. had some uh, some folks dropping in and and watching the build as it progressed, and that's cool. Uh, managed to get get a skateboard ramp out of, out of a of, out of a weekend. Yeah, so I meant to ask you, for the uh, plywood that you had to curve, did y'all just get something thinner, more pliable? Did you soak it? Like, what did you do to get it to follow the curve? 
Yeah, we just got like three eighth inch. Three eighth, yeah. By, and um, and then and and then just laid it down. We had like two people putting right. weight on it to keep it following the curve, and one person going through and uh, tacking yeah. it down with a with a with a driver. Nice, very yeah. cool. <sighs> Right, yeah, cool. it was a well, fun, fun little process. Yeah, it looked like fun. But yeah, uh, small brute. Oops. If you uh, if, if if you drop drop the link uh, where you think you saw me, I'd be happy to. Uh, yeah, happy to tell if it was me or not. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So I hit this link by accident. I meant to copy it, but oops. Since we're here, I might as well as dive into it uh graphql tools the next generation schema stitching and new leadership so graphql tools was a open source repository um, that has big surprise a lot of helpers and tools for working with graphql um, mm -hmm. but it was under the apollo namespace but wasn't really an apollo open source project if that makes sense um, a lot of things in the graphql ecosystem uh happened to end up under the apollo um, repo i guess just for um consolidation's sake uh but now uh it has been uh, adopted or picked up um by the guild so the guild does a lot of stuff around graphql um, so they're definitely worth checking out uh they do a lot of cool stuff i won't get too much into it um something really neat that i'm still working on wrapping my head around is graphql mesh um but anyway long story short i'm not gonna get too far into that uh definitely check them out but yeah they have adopted the graphql tools repository and they're going to be working on um uh on the project right so they they're going they released v5 with some bug fixes uh and stuff like that but now they're going to be working to get v6 out uh which is amazing super cool so let's see what else what are they gonna do well that's what they enabled to we asked and you listened oh interesting merge schemas that will be very cool um import schemas okay optimize client-side queries with relay compiler interesting load resolvers and type dish and that's really cool. it is cool right one of, one of uh, the things that relay does and and this is this is some something related to a question asked earlier in chat yeah um yeah. and uh, i i didn't i didn't didn't think to mention it but um one of the features of relays client is that they they basically um they get a, a view of all of the different graphql queries that you need to execute and then they find all the commonalities between them or or just essentially merge them all into one query and then yeah. send one query to your server uh and then when you get your data back for that one query it, it then distributes the data uh accordingly so you know you, you might build a react app that has multi that's made out of multiple graphql queries like you have a a header that shows you know the, the the logged in users information and then the, in the body you have a query that fetches some some other kind of data uh and you have those broken out into separate graphql queries relay actually like behind the scenes takes those queries merges them into one uh so you 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 thereby like limiting the number of round trips to the server yeah. um and and that that's kind of cool. So th that's kind of what I, I assume that's what they're talking about when they mention um, you know relays query compilation or, or whatever whatever wording they use there. Yeah, I'm very very curious to know a little bit more about what that does. But yeah, which is really cool about it building that single query because like you might actually request the same data in multiple places, like getting back to that user example. Yeah, you might want their name and their avatar for the header, and then you want their name and some other bits of data for another section on the page. 
Um, mm. And because it's going to join that query together, you're only going to fetch name once. And like, doesn't sound like much, and that's a very contrived example, but you might hit situations with like large data sets. Um, not to keep jumping back to MLS, but that was like a huge um, system that used uh, GraphQL. And I could imagine a lot of data around like stats for games or player information or stuff. And uh, a lot of times it might not even be about it saving you a lot over the wire, but it might be saving a lot of work on the server. Like what if the cache happens to expire in between that and you have to refetch that data like that, you know, that that can be expensive in and of itself, right? Um, if, if you only need it once, why get it twice, I guess? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, like this 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 move is actually um, it's kind of cool and it represents like a, it. a shift in our in kind of the way that we're um, dealing with our open source repositories, yeah. uh, where repos that we don't have Apollo staff working on, we're um, we're opening it up to other community members to take on those repos to adopt them and, and maintain them. Yeah. Um, elsewhere, whereas before they they were kind of left in our in our GitHub org and and felt like they were kind of rotting. So um, so we're seeing a lot of a lot of other GraphQL community members coming through and um, taking on the responsibility to um, keep these keep some of these repos up and running and moving forward. And I think that's that's an amazing thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I couldn't agree more. Let's get them out of there. Get them revitalized. The renaissance of GraphQL tooling. There is like, we have just barely begun to scratch the surface of tooling when it comes to one typed JavaScript and two, uh, GraphQL, mm -hmm. uh, typed languages open up the door for really, really cool tooling. Cause you always know what you're dealing with. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see what the next few years holds for stuff like that. Yeah, me too. Cool. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So that is the end of the list, but I want to talk about two other things real quick that I have. Um, they're not really GraphQL related, but uh, one is a project that, well, both are projects that I contributed to. So one is called self-defined app. And so I'm actually uh, talking about this because I haven't spoken to anybody about GraphQL yet, but we are build they're building an API, uh, and I'm curious to know what their uh, what their choices are for that API. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they were interested in GraphQL. But anyway, I've been building the search. It's a project that I found that I'm really interested in, and they need contributors. So I'm sharing it here, self promotion, in case anybody wants to contribute to it. So what it is, it's basically a modern dictionary um, that it has more inclusive, holistic, and kind of fluid definitions uh, of a lot of common words that we face um, pretty much everywhere. Um, and yeah, it's really cool because it's open source. So like these words and phrases and stuff get defined by people who um, are affected by them or represent them the most, right? Because uh, it's open. Uh, so it's very cool. And so it's just a lot of, uh, uh, I use this to look it up all the times, like to discover uh, if terminology that I'm using is not good, uh, if I should not be using it. Like I've always used, and I, I'm even someone who suffers with a lot of uh, mental um, uh, issues like depression and, and other stuff but uh yeah like i always say like crazy or insane and like you don't realize but that's like pretty harmful to folks who like have mental issues right and so like it was very cool to just come in here and go through but anyway i'm working on search because right now it is a big flat list uh and it's really cool it's been really fun i've been streaming it so i'll be streaming again next saturday self-defined saturdays uh, and I'll be continuing to work on the search, uh, and it's very cool. But anyway, project that I love, uh, please check it out if you get some time. Uh, they could use both help. Uh, I guess I could say we now because I'm contributing on it. We could use help from 
uh, a coding standpoint, as well as defining some of this stuff. So a lot of the words that are here uh, might not actually be defined. So like if I can't click on it, it means like the word is here, but no one has been able to like come through and really um, define it yet. Whereas we can go here like, dude, dude is a word I use uh, all the time, but it does have some issues. Um, you know, so it's just like interesting to read and go through this and see like the effect vocabulary can have on people. Anyway, long story short, that's number one. Uh, it's a really fun project. The second one is, um, boom, RBB, which is Rebuild Black Businesses. Uh, so this website is aimed at helping rebuild black businesses that were affected through COVID or protesting or other issues, or they're just uh, having issues here. And so again, this is an open source project. This, these businesses are all stored in Airtable. This is a Gatsby site. It's built in React. Um, so it's Gatsby, it's using GraphQL, uh, and then it pulls in all the businesses. You could come in here, you can learn more about the businesses, you could donate to them. But again, I believe they also still need help on the technical side, as well as um, uh, maybe help like adding businesses, or if you know local businesses are struggling, you can add them. So I'll drop this in here as well. And that's all I got for me. Does anyone from the chat have anything else that they want to add? And while they're doing that, what do we, what else we got coming up? Ooh, I got some streams coming up I could talk about. Let's hear it. So tomorrow there's actually two. And so um, I haven't really tweeted out about them yet. I'm going to tweet about them later, uh, a little later today. Uh, but the first one is learning how to set up Federation. Um, so... Uh, Michael Watson's going to come on and I think Jeff Hampton might make an appearance. I'm not sure. I know he accepted tentatively or maybe he'll be in the chat, um, but they're going to come on and show me how to set up Federation uh, and what that looks like. So I'm very curious about that. It's something I'm very interested in. And later tomorrow, I'm doing another mission briefing uh, with Michael from DGRAPH. And the reason why is it's a two for on a Tuesday and one is later is he's in Australia. So we're going to do 7 yeah he's gonna, we're going to do 7 p.m. Eastern which is 9 a.m. the following day for Michael so I'll be talking to him from the future <laughs> and uh yeah so uh so we're going to be looking at slash graphql um which is um a a uh, like a platform for setting up dgraph database if you have not seen the mission streaming on dgraph i would check it out because this is actually one of the the times when i would say i would use something that goes directly from database to client but you've got to kind of see it in action first to to understand why um it's really cool um and i'm excited to to take a look at the like the online hosted platform because like dgraph is a database you would have to host yourself or run yourself but they have an online platform for it yeah and then thursday we got launchpad awesome and just to just to confirm that the dgraph mission briefing is going to be at 7 p.m eastern eastern tomorrow yeah okay so so that would be um like 4, 4 p.m pacific yep 9 a.m if you're in australia Oh, yeah. And the uh, Federation uh, one, I believe, ooh, is going to be 1 p.m. Eastern, which is 11, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific. Boom. Awesome. Math. I'm excited for that one. Uh, Federation is, is a topic that, that um, like, I mean, working at Apollo, I, I'm yeah. familiar with the, the concept, but I've never actually yep. federated a graph myself. Um, Same thing. I'm so very excited. Be it be really interesting to to yeah. see what that's all about. I've never stitched a graph either, and I'm skipping right from a monograph <laughs> to federated. I never had to had to stitch any any schemas together. Jump right in the deep end there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I got. Oh, oh, we got something in the chat. I almost missed it. BXJS streamed by Yamalite. There are always some cool things, so we're checking out if it is relevant for you. I don't know what BXJS is, um, but the, I do want to check this out. It does sound interesting to me. This is something that I can Google, BXJS, weekly. B 
Oh, building X with JavaScript. Very cool. This is cool. And it's a weekly stream. Awesome. Bye. Yamalite. Thanks. I'm finally catching up. Very cool. Yeah, I'll have to check this out. Ooh, dev and gaming. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that and check that out. Um, let me actually take that the link. Well, actually, I'll do this one because it has everything. And drop that in the chat. Also, thank you for sharing that. Uh, okay, but we have nothing else. So I guess like with that, we should probably wrap this up. Um, do you have anything else you want to add before we go, Trevor? No, I think that's it for me. All right. Well, that is it for me. I guess maybe we could find someone to raid. If we want to raid. Sure, yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look here. Can't hurt. Take a gander. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I got a bike, a, uh, a road bike today. It's on my porch. I have to put together later. I'm going to do some cycling. I'm going to be one of those people on the road. You know, everyone's trying to get around. It's going to be me. <laughs> nice. Here, <laughs> let's uh, let's raid let's raid these folks here. Ooh. Okay. Um. This is this is a channel we we've uh, we've we've sent oh, yes. sent our viewers over to uh, Eddie Blue before and and today they're they're talking about web development design performance accessibility and other stuff with Ooh. with guests. Um, awesome. So that should be fun. Hope you all enjoy. And uh, and yeah, thanks so much for 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 tuning into the stream and and we'll hope to see yeah. you next time. Yeah, we hope to see you next week. Thanks again for joining us. Feels good to be back. Uh, and as, he sa uh, as Trevor said, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Cool.